Every one of you for being here, helping us celebrate Wilfred Walker Brown's life and his eventual journey to see the Father in Heaven. We all came to witness my uncle Sonny, live with him, talk with him, shared so much with him. He was a very simple man as far as he lived his life in a simple way. He didn't do much, he just was happy, kept his circle small. So today we're gonna to celebrate that this way. We're calling this a reflection, not a service. We're gonna sit here, we're gonna reflect on Uncle Sonny and the things that we shared with him. Everyone has a story. So what I'm gonna ask is everyone that wants to speak, stand up, we will call you, you can speak, you can sing, you can say a scripture, tell a story or whatever. But what we're gonna to do to start with, we're gonna have Sister Violet Jones 
Give us a prayer. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Just say thank God for a sunny life because we all knew him as someone that was happy and loved to smile. So let's just say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For let me know, Sunny. Thank you, you know that's a wonderful thing when you know somebody that didn't argue and didn't fight and didn't curse and carry on and, and they get to go home to be with the Lord. So let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come in your presence. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you that you have promised us that you would never leave us nor forsake us. Sunny may be gone, but for the family, you are with us forever, forever. And we thank you for the comforting power of the Holy Spirit that will comfort us in a way that we don't even know how to act. Father, if any here have any doubt in their mind whether they are saved today to meet Sunny sometime on the other side, we're praying now that salvation would reign. We pray for salvation. I know people say that that's not the place, but now is the appointed time. Father, if any here among us that have not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, this is my prayer for my family, that we all be saved. So we ask you, Father, to prick their hearts and give them the opportunity to say, Lord, come into my heart and save me. And we know you're going to comfort Angeline in a way that we don't know because she's been a sister a mother or whatever he needed she has been there for him so she may be feeling like she's going to be lonely but she's going to father we thank you that you're going to put in her remembrance those good times those good things and she'll reflect on them i pray that she has laughed with him laughed at him and she'll laugh again in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. thank you so much so at this point, we're just going to ask anybody that want to reflect on anything, please stand. I will call on you. You can speak. Um, then we'll follow that up with the reading of the obituary. And then Ms. Brown will give us a scripture. We can do the scriptures first. Ms. Gertrude Brown, please. Read the scripture to you. I know everybody know it because God has really been Sonny's shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in the green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. I will feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil. <coughs> my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I know Sunday is saying that. Good afternoon. I guess everybody can hear me. Um, I just want to say um, a little something uh, about Uncle Sonny. Again, my name is William. Uh, I guess I'm Uncle Sonny's oldest uh, nephew. Uh, um, Wilfred Walker Brown, uh, uh, better known or also known as Uncle Sonny, and that's why I called him Uncle Sonny. In fact, a lot of people call him Uncle Sonny. In fact, even my cousins called him Uncle Sonny. In fact, very few people I know called him uh, Wilford. You know, I knew his uh, first name was Wilford, but we always known him as Uncle Sonny. In fact, I met somebody earlier that called him Wilford, and I was surprised, you know, because everybody 
you Uncle Sonny, you know, it was Uncle Sonny. And I just found out his middle name is was Walker. You know, I just found that out recently, and I thought, what an appropriate uh, name for Uncle Sonny, Walker. You know, <laughs> Uncle Sonny did his share of walking. You know, we can tell all kinds of stories about him walking from Harwood over to the beaches, and certainly walking to Walmart, you know, from my mom's house. I mean, definitely, he definitely was a walker there. You know, Uncle Sonny, uh, I guess we'll read later in the obituary. I guess he grew up on the farm. He did the cut tobacco. For those that can remember, cutting tobacco and the tobacco fields. But he later got into landscaping. And uh, I think that's what that was his calling. I mean, he did a beautiful job with uh, landscaping there. He kind of took to landscaping as what they said, ducks take to water. He did a great job. And those are when he first moved in with my mom, can remember what a beautiful job. He was very technical and very detailed and what he did. I, I mean, I used to watch him and, you know, he, he basically knew what he was doing. So he knew that. Uncle Sonny also liked to play the lottery, you know, at 7-Eleven. I don't know how much he won, if he won much at all, but he, he definitely used to play the numbers. Uh, a lot of, if he did win, he maybe didn't tell anybody. But uh, <laughs> he definitely used to play the lottery. Uh, also, I was saying, like the sweets there. You know, the honey buns and the Mountain Dews. You know, he, he, that was his favorite. And as far as uh, food, well, he liked the piano sausages. <laughs> you know, I think uh, they just get them at the Dollar Store or the Dollar General. So I'm sure they're gonna lose some sales now. <laughs> so they're probably in the office now why, wondering why their sales uh, are down. You know, Uncle Sonny hasn't been there to buy the piano sausages. Also, Uncle Sonny liked the uh, fish sandwich, the double fish sandwich from McDonald's. And I guess my brother Junior, myself, and my mom all know about that. Uncle Sonny always uh, had a taste for uh, a uh, fish sandwich from McDonald's, so their sales are probably down too. <laughs> uh, with Sonny, with Uncle Sonny uh, uh, not being uh, there uh, to patronize them anymore. Um, Uncle Sonny, even though I, I don't remember him going to church every Sunday, or, but uh, Uncle Sonny practiced uh, the Bible. He was a religious man, he was a believer. He was faithful, uh, certainly believed in, believed in the Lord. And he practiced uh, one uh, particular book that uh, kind of reminded me of Uncle Sonny was uh, James. James, uh, you know, and James preaches uh, patience, peacefulness, kindness, and all those things. All of those things describes Uncle Sonny. Also, uh, Envy, Uncle Sonny, I never know him to be envious of anybody, even though he didn't have a whole lot, you know, you know, you know, kind of like things that, you know, cars and that type of thing. But he was never envious of anybody else. He was always happy for for you if you had a car, or a nice car, or you got a new new car. He was very uh, pleased and happy for you, and certainly was envy of you. Also, it speaks in James of the unruly tongue. And I don't think Uncle Sonny definitely didn't have an unruly tongue. You know, maybe at some point, you know, Uncle Sonny lived 84 years. I'm sure somebody at some point got on his last nerve. But he never, uh, he never showed it. I don't remember Uncle Sonny ever being mad or angry or at anybody for, for anything. So I think he definitely lived the life that, that God wants us to live and, and the way God uh, is described in the book of James and you know, all the things that patience, peaceful, kindness, you know, not having that um, unruly tongue. But in the end, it, you know, it says uh, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And also uh, saying that we all hear is all things, all good things must end. They all come to an end. 
the sun rises, the sun sets. You know, for Uncle Sonny, you know, his son rose on August the 5th, 1936, and the sun set for Uncle Sonny on December the 24th, 2020. Although we're all gonna miss Uncle Sonny, I know, I know my mom will miss him, his sister Angeline, uh, and her sister-in-law Grace will miss him, and I guess his goddaughter, and one of his niece Rita will miss him. Um, but uh, we read in uh, Revelation, you know, we read about the new heaven and read about new earth. Also it talks about the resurrection. So we, you know, I won't get into that, but certainly you can read it. I know some of us are familiar with uh, Revelation. Another uh, uh, I took out of the Bible was Matthew. Matthew 13, 24, it mentions the kingdom of heaven. And it says the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in the field. And that reminds me of, uh, of Uncle Sonny, I mean, with his uh, flowers and, and, you know, trimming trees and all the good landscaping that he did. So in conclusion, I'll say, uh, rest in peace, Uncle Sonny. Rest in peace of Wilfred Walker Brown. And may the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. And also may his memory, all of a sudden his memory, be a blessing to everybody that knew him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, William, for those words. Did anyone want to reflect on anything? Please stand, I will call on you. LB. First and foremost, I'd like to give my condolences again to the family, even though that's my family as well. But I'm going to tell you something funny <clears throat> about Uncle Sonny. I used to see him walking. I didn't know who he was for a minute. Didn't I think, who is that man walking there? You know. But, you know, I was, even though I didn't live in the county still, I would always be able to visit my mother and father. So one day I was sitting in the dorm, and him and dad were down at the little house. So I pulled up, and I said, Told that, hey, Pop, what up? He said, you don't know who this is, do you? I said, no, nah, I see him, but I you know, didn't know who he was. That's the Angeline brother. I said, how you doing, sir? He said, how you doing, that young fella? <laughs> so, so as time went on, I seen him. <clears throat> now, William said all he said, but I tell you something else, he didn't say that Uncle Sonny was, he was careful. Now, why I said that, I have Uncle Sonny 5,200 times if you need a ride. He said, oh, no, 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 just walking, you know, getting his bike stuff. But I think what he was doing, like, let me make sure this boy know how to drive <laughs> before, <laughs> before I get in the car with him, you know, because I ain't crazy. So after a while, after a while, time went on, and, you know, I seen him here and there with, with Dad, and we would talk, we would interact. He went from Mr. Brown to Uncle Sonny. See what I'm saying? Because he had that spirit and that love on him that you couldn't keep calling him Mr. Brown. Now, if you interact with him long enough, you just couldn't. It, it had to be Uncle Sonny. Because I'm telling you, I never seen him mad. I never seen him upset. I never heard him say anything, any strife against anybody or any negativity of him coming out of his mouth. Now, that's just me. I didn't interact with him every day. But I'm just telling you. Now, one day I said, um, he had me say, what's your name, young fella? Young fella, young fella, what's your name? I said, they call me LP. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, Mr. He said, yeah, Mr. Brown really like this man, you know. I said, yeah, that's what the truth is, man. I said, yeah. So we, I, I did that was like one of the first times I got him, and I brought him to the house, you know, dropped him off. 
I think when I told him that day my name, he never called me by my name again. It was always young fella. Amen. I said, I said, hey, uh, the other son, you mean Rod? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think Rod. Hey, young fella. He <laughs> never called me by my name. I just laughed. I said, Dad, that's what an uncle do. Uncle don't remember names. Man. <laughs> I know who child you are, but I don't, I don't remember your name. I just call you a young fella, but I tell you what. He also, William didn't know he was a therapist. Now, from a distance. I had three hip replacement on my hip. And I said, man. But then you get thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute. This man was 70 some years old, walking anywhere he wanted. So why are you not walking? You know, so he was like a therapist to me. You know, never say nothing to him about it. But just seeing somebody who kept going and going and going and going. So, you know, hey, man, you got to get out there. Baby. This ain't no pity party, which I know is, you know, pity on myself anyway. But he inspired me to keep going. Right. You know, you know, this man, you know, wait a minute now. You know, uh, but he, he he always was so much of an inspiration. And I mean, and Betty, my sister, who couldn't make it today. Every week, I had three Uncle Sonny stories. She <laughs> called me Angeline. She called me. <laughs> Let me tell you, me and Angeline took Uncle Sonny to the doctor's then Uncle Sonny, Uncle Sonny did, and Uncle Sonny. I said, Betty. Okay, Betty. Help me, Uncle Sonny, I mean, every day that she can sit here and tell you a million Uncle Sonny stories because he became her right hand man. I'm telling you the God truth, that is the truth and everything that she would talk about him more than she talked about her kids. <laughs> she talked about Uncle Sonny, Uncle Sonny this, Uncle Sonny that. But to conclude everything, I'm just happy that we got to know him. I'm telling you the truth. I'm, very, I'm telling you the truth. He ain't Mr. Brown. He loves his son. Amen. That's what I feel good about. We got to know somebody who never, ever I heard complain. He ain't never complain. He ain't never said, oh, man, I ain't got this. I ain't got this. He was just the kind of person. And he was an example for what life and can really be to all of us to, to show us that, hey, you don't need a million dollars. You don't need a house. You don't need nothing. You got love and family. That's all he had. And he was quite, quite happy with it and everything. So, Uncle Sonny, you go ahead and you get your walk on now. You can, <laughs> you can walk all through heaven <laughs> and see everybody you haven't seen in a while. So, Uncle Sonny, and keep looking out for all of us. Well, one day we hope and pray to be with you again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, LB. Anybody else want to say anything? One thing about Uncle Sonny that LB brought to my mind was I could picture him walking up that road. You can picture him as clear as day walking that cane. Yep. Because he didn't need the cane to walk. He had the cane dragging behind him. <laughs> dragging on the road behind him as he walking down 231 to go home. And I would stop by, oh, Sonny, get in the car. Nah, nah, nah. No, no, young man, I got this. I need my exercise. I'll see you at the house. <laughs> anyway, Miss Gertrude, please. Well, y'all, my uncle, he was my
never owned him, you know. But you know, he fought a good fight. And I'm so glad that one day he got a crown laying up there for him. Mm -hmm. I know it's gonna be so heavy with stars in his crown that Jesus will pick it up for him. Because mm -hmm. he's been on the battlefield for the <coughs> Everybody I met at Walmart when he stopped coming, he said, where you coming at? I said, he can't walk like he used to walk. I said, he wish he could. I said, but he got a ramp on the house now so he, he can walk down the side of the ramp. But he never stayed inside unless he was very sick. You know, sometimes we've been in the house, oh man, cold so dead, I ain't going up in there. But he didn't say that. He went outside and sat in that little place that he had it there, looked all around, and you know, just looking for love. And I said, I'm adding the birds song to him. The squirrels ran up the tree with their tails switching around. And I'm adding, that was joy. Because God got so much joy in nature, you know, that it will draw you and make you feel that love that you're missing, that nobody stopped by today. And nobody said hello today. And nobody said, I'll stop by and see you and your sister today because y'all need a drink of water, you know? And so I just say, I'm just going to read this little verse in the Bible. He had the fruit of the Spirit. It said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. He had peace of mind. And he was long-suffering. Because I said, let me buy you some food and things. And we said, no. My sister buy all this food. She do all this cooking. I don't have to worry about that. And so I said, praise God that you and your sister, that cook. That's love. Okay? And then uh, it's gentle. He was, he was goodness. He had faith. Because if he didn't have faith, he wouldn't got that baby and walked up that long road. Because I'm saying myself now, I ain't going that far. <laughs> you know, but we don't know how far we're going to walk to be with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So he did it to let his light shine so other men see his good work and glorify his Father, which is in heaven. And so that's why he done it. He said, I can't do too much to witness to you, but at least I can do that. And you know, that was wonderful. And he was meekness. He was temperance. Because, you know, he didn't eat everything. He didn't eat at a certain time. He ate at a certain time. He didn't eat all the train meals and stuff like that. I could see that in him. Because when he sat and got 11 o'clock at Walmart, he said, sleep, I think the old man is going to go home now. Then he would go to 7 11. Then he would walk around. Wow. And then he, they say you see him going down Mason Road, going home. But he no way home was there. And he still know where home is, because he got a special home up there. Yeah. One day, he going to be up there in glory. Amen. But right now, he can't go there yet, because too much going on down here. He got to stay there and rest, because he done paid his price. He done fought his good fight. So glory to God. And it, and it said, uh, he was tempered, and it gives suck. There is no law. So he kept the law of Christ. He did the best that he know how. You know, he had a wonderful dad as a teacher. He had a wonderful sister walk beside him. So I remember she would go to school, walk across the road there to Clark Park School. And then you tease you and do all kinds of stuff. And you went wrong about your business, kept on climbing high, and you're still climbing. So you keep on climbing like your son, like your brother did. And you will make it in one day. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. And we're celebrating the life of uh, Wilfred Sonny Walker Brown. He was my uncle. I was his niece. Um, Wilfred Sonny Walker Brown, he was born on August 5th in 1936 to the late John Preston Brown and Carrie Johnson Brown of Calvert County, Maryland. Wilfred was the fourth of seven siblings, and he was educated in the Calvert County school system. Wilfred worked hard all his life, first as a farmer and then as a landscaper. He was mostly known to cut grasses at the beaches in Calvert County. He loved to walk. He walked everywhere he went. And when he wasn't walking, 
He was doing his second favorite activity, which was talking. And that includes talking on the phone and in person. He loved talking and joking and laughing with people and putting a smile on their faces. Wilfred leaves behind his sister, Angeline C. Boom, his sister-in-law, Grace Brown, his cousin and special friend, Buck Brown, his goddaughter, Rita Brown, his goddaughter, Hazel, several nieces, nephews, and cousins. He will truly be missed. Rest in peace, Uncle Sam. And while I'm here, I'd like to acknowledge the family would like to uh, thank all of you who've been so kind and generous during this time of bereavement. We gratefully acknowledge with sincere appreciation the many kind expressions of sympathy and love ex uh, extended during our loss, including today. The family will not be having a repast and wishes to grieve alone. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe. Amen. Thank you, Carol. Um, just like to say that will conclude the service and I'm gonna end this real quickly.